Um, good afternoon all. Um, so we will give this another couple of minutes just to allow others who have signed up to join. Um, so we'll start around three, four minutes past 12. OK, I think we should start, Steve. OK. okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ezra Abdurrahman. I'm the Senior Engagement Officer um, in the Strategic Planning Team. Um, so welcome to the Regulation 19 Local Plan webinar on the Northwood chapter. Um, so for this webinar, Steve Barton will do a presentation on the overall local plan structure and then go into details on the proposals for North Holt. Um, and then we'll close off with the ways in which you can send in your representations. So this is a webinar. Um, so mics and cameras are switched off during the presentation. However, if you would like to voice your question, please do raise your hand and I'll bring you in. Um, once the presentation is over, please feel free to also pop your questions in the chat or the Q&A box throughout the presentation, um, and we will aim to respond to those either throughout or after the presentation. Um, this webinar is recorded and we will upload the recording and the slides to the new local plan page after the webinar, um, so you can rewatch. Um, you can also send us an email after the webinar if you have any further questions. Um, it is a small audience this afternoon, so feel free to send in as many questions as you'd like. Um, and yeah, that's it. So Steve, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much, Ezra. My name is uh, Steve Barton. I'm the strategic planning manager for Ealing Council, and I manage the team responsible for preparing and producing the local plan. So as Ezra says, I'm going to provide a bit of context, a bit of background to the local plan. I'm going to talk specifically about town plans and North Holt in particular. I will also actually say a little bit about the con community infrastructure levy, which we're consulting upon uh, at the same time, and then explain how you can get involved in terms of providing feedback. So starting with the local plan itself, clearly obviously a very important, very significant document that will help shape future growth and development across the borough. 
It sets out a vision, priorities and planning policy framework for future development and is in line with the council's own priorities set out in the council plan. What the local plan seeks to do is provide um, a certainty and, and confidence for communities, businesses and investors about where development should be focused and the scale and type of development across the seven towns. The local plan must be prepared in line uh, with requirements that are set by government in the national planning policy framework and by regional government uh, in the London plan prepared by the Mayor of London. Indeed, the local plan must be in general conformity with the London plan. It covers a 15 year period up to 2039. And just to remind people, the local plan should be reviewed every five years. Now, obviously looking at some of the local plan highlights is always very subjective, but you know, here's my sort of top 12, if you like. Certainly the focus of the local plan is very much about how we can uh, shape uh, places locally and regenerate our town centres. We take an approach to each of the seven towns, each of the different geographies um, of Ealing. Um, we don't want Ealing to be a dormitory suburb of central London and the West End. We want to spread growth and investment across the town, but we, we also want to see um, jobs and employment on our doorstep as well. The plan also shows how we should promote active travel and the concept of the 20 minute neighbourhood has key policies around uh, affordable housing and how we can uh, deliver more generally affordable housing. We raise the fast track threshold for affordable housing, uh, which is the uh, threshold beyond which viability assessments are required from 35% of the London plan to 40%. We also ensure that small sites, uh, i.e. developments less than 10 units, uh, should make affordable housing contributions. They don't presently. There are also a suite of policies around promoting and sustaining jobs in the borough and including uh, providing more affordable uh, workspace. We take a very robust approach to tall buildings and we set out where they are acceptable and what heights uh, might be deemed to be suitable. There is a, a new suite of very ambitious climate action policies, including on whole life carbon, and there are clear design principles and infrastructure requirements set out now for each of the 84 site allocations now contained in the plan. And as I indicated at the beginning, we also set out proposals in a separate consultation for a new community infrastructure levy, effectively a tax on future development to help fund uh, um, the infrastructure that's necessary to support future growth and development. So the local plan um, is structured as follows. Firstly, to make the point that the London plan is an integral part of our local development plan. So we do not repeat or duplicate policies in the London plan. The first two chapters of the plan set out some broad context uh, and, and a sort of policy framework that the council operates within. Chapter three sets out the spatial strategy, which includes our vision and strategic priorities. Uh, and includes a, a sort of high level diagrammatic key diagram. The bulk of the plan is in chapter four, which is the seven town plans, including obviously Northolt, uh, and that sets out how that borough wide spatial uh, strategy will be implemented in each of the different geographies uh, of Ealing, together with a suite of development sites, those places where we think development is most likely to happen over the next 15 years. Chapter five, is a perfectly formed set of development management policies. Uh, these are the criteria based policies allied with the London plan that are used to help determine individual planning applications. And then finally, sitting alongside uh, the local plan is something called the policies map. And I would urge you to have a look at uh, our website uh, and the Atlas of Change, which indicates those planning policy designations uh, that are proposed to be amended or altered as a result of this local plan. There is also an interactive policies map which will enable you to uh, look at planning policy de designations within your own locality and also chart where there are development sites in your backyard. So this slide sets out the broad planning framework. So as I said, we must operate within a framework which includes government policy, the MPPF uh, and the London plan. And sitting beneath our local plan are neighbour plans. There are none in North Alt, but there are two currently adopted in Central and West Ealing. I should just make the point though, the local plan does not cover the entire geography of the London Borough of Ealing. And that is because a mayoral development corporation called the Old Oak and Park Royal Development Corporation 
has separate local plan making responsibilities and that covers the northeast uh, area of the borough. So the local plan does not make planning policy for that area. There is a separate local plan which has been published by the OPDC. This slide then illustrates the stages in the preparation of the local plan and we're currently at stage five, Reg 19. So the early stages were very much about the shaping yielding consultation, finding out what the opportunities, what the challenges that local communities faced, uh, as well as a, a round of very intensive evidence-based gathering, uh, technical evidence. We then prepared some initial proposals, Reg 18, which we consulted upon between November 2022 and February 2023, a 10-week ten, consultation, if you recall. Having then digested um, the, the very extensive feedback, more than 14,000 responses, um, we then have uh, made further changes, modifications to the plan. Those are all, by the way, summarised in chapter naught um, of the local plan. And we've now published our Reg 19 document, which is, if you like, our final proposals. And this consultation will last for six weeks, after which we'll submit the plan for independent um, examination by, a, set, uh, by a, a, a planning inspector appointed by the Secretary of State, and then subject to um, their findings, um, the plan will then be open for adoption by the full council and that's expected to take place in the summer of next year. So an important context is the council's own plan. The council's plan sets out three overarching strategic objectives around climate action, about fighting inequality and creating good jobs and growth. And these very much form the golden threads uh, throughout the local plan. And sitting within each of these three strategic objectives, are um, three priorities. And this slide illustrates the vision that's in chapter three of the local plan, the spatial strategy. Not going to go through this in detail, but the essence of this is that we want to see future growth and prosperity to be more balanced across the seven towns of Ealing so that no town is left behind and no town does a disproportionate share perhaps of the heavy lifting. And this illustrates that in terms of a key diagram, a diagrammatic representation of, of those areas um, uh, where growth and development will be focused. And you'll see it's primarily focused around many of our town centres with the additions of two new proposals, one uh, in the environs of Perryville Station, but one here in Northolt uh, around the current White Hart roundabout where we're proposing in both cases two new local neighbourhood centres or mini town centres. So chapter four, um, as I say, is the bulk of the plan, and this sets out um, how we can ensure that each of the towns contribute to the future prosperity uh, of the borough and ensure that growth can be more balanced across the borough. And it starts on the premise that each of the seven towns has its own unique set of challenges and opportunities and therefore priorities for future development. And each town plan is broadly divided into four components some broad contextual information, those key issues and opportunities that have been identified either through the technical evidence base or through the earlier rounds of consultation, particularly shaping Ealing. Uh, a town spatial strategy then articulates how the borough-wide spatial vision and strategy will be translated into town-specific policies guiding future development investment in Northall. And then there are a series of town-specific spatial policies which set out further detailed planning policy that relates to specific parts of each town. And then finally, uh, each town plan includes a set of development sites. Those are those uh, very specific sites with red line boundaries, critical to the delivery of the spatial strategy overall and addressing Ealing's need for things like new homes, jobs and necessary infrastructure. So finally, turning to Northolt itself. So Northolt today is home to a diverse and multicultural population of nearly 34,000 residents. However, large areas are amongst the 10 to 20 percent most deprived neighbourhoods nationally. Um, in particular, communities east of Church Road and surrounding, surrounding Rectory Park. Historically, parts of Northolt have experienced very low levels of inward investment. Northolt's housing stock is largely composed of post-war residential estates with strong provision of open and green space. The neighbourhoods to the west have strong accessibilities to areas of strategic green open land. And in addition, the Northolt Village Green 
conservation area is home to multiple listed buildings, including the Grade 1 listed St Mary's Church. Northolt, together with Northolt Park stations, provide very strong east-west connectivity to and from London, but north-south connectivity across the town is generally poor, with neighbourhoods south of the A40 in particular suffering from low levels of accessibility. The A40 and the Church Road, Mandeville Road, the A312, pass through the town and this creates issues of severance. The main town centre is focused just south of North Hall Underground Station, extending down Mandeville Road and Church Road, and there are also smaller clusters of shopping parades elsewhere in the town. Looking at some of the challenges and opportunities for the town. In terms of challenges, North Hall as a whole is shaped by relatively poor connectivity, as I've already said, uh, both within the town and with the rest of London. Most movement in North Hall is therefore disproportionately by car, whether local or for long distance, with relatively live little opportunities for active travel. There is a small uh, and low value local economy with a number of jobs paying under the London living wage. The strategic industrial location site within North Holt has low employment densities compared to other industrial clusters across um, Ealing. And alongside this, there's a lack of office space and alternative, uh, particularly affordable workspace, resulting in office space workers leaving the town to work. This lack of economic diversity stems from a lack of a strongly defined town centre. There are also limited alternative housing options to suit young and older groups, including shared ownership and assisted living. In terms of opportunities, clearly enhancing and improving our existing town centres and creating new ones is an obvious one. Sustainable, healthy and active travel could be encouraged by creating new and well-connected cycle and walking routes and consolidating and enhancing uh, bus service provision. There is a strong industrial base in North Holt with specialisms in things like manufacturing, wholesale transport and storage and projected growth in the industrial sector could create new jobs, strengthen the local economy uh, and boost wages. So the spatial vision uh, for North Holt, um, sets out what we believe to be a significant opportunity for future investment and growth to deliver new and improved housing, jobs, services, transport infrastructure and amenities locally. And we believe that North Hall's town centres will play a larger role in creating economic opportunity, the provision of services and acting as centres of local and wider connectivity in particular. North Hall's existing neighbourhood town centre will be a focus for new mixed use development, including housing that supports a stronger retail and service offer for those living and working in the area and opportunities for new workspaces and community infrastructure. The existing town centre will be complemented by a new secondary neighbourhood centre at the current White Hart roundabout. This will be reconfigured. Development intensity will be optimised around an enhanced public transport and active travel interchange. The Church Road and Mandeville Road corridor, uh, which then joins these two centres, will be reinforced as the central corridor for commercial activity with improved connectivity north-south and to and from the surrounding residential areas and green spaces. And an improved industrial cluster at North Holt Industrial Estate will help harness projected growth in the industrial sector and create new and more resilient local jobs. In terms of the spatial strategy, significant investment is proposed in active travel interventions and improved public transport, reinforcing north-south connectivity, while also improving the permeability um, of local neighbourhoods and supporting health and environmental outcomes. Investments in town centres will also support uh, addressing key help health determinants through increased provision of social infrastructure and access to services. North Holt's housing estates at Medler Farm, the Edding Lane, the Racecourse, Grange Court, Willow Tree and Is Islet Manor will be a focus for sustainable growth and enhancement and will be carefully master planned to optimise any future development opportunities with higher quality public realm accessibility improvements and timely infrastructure delivery. Development intensification of industrial and commercial uses will include the provision of active frontages, improved public realm and active travel routes where appropriate and will build on Norfolk's strong industrial business base uh, and good connectivity to the A40, 
to create new jobs and help catalyze the local economy. And finally, the plan sets out um, key infrastructure delivery priorities for Northolt. And this is illustrated uh, on a key diagram uh, for the town. And then the town plan sets out um, a number of spatial policies, and these are to diversify and enhance uh, Northolt neighborhood town center to create an enhanced and better gateway to the area and to create a diverse and attractive new neighborhood center at the current White Hart uh, roundabout, which uh, contains existing small shopping uh, parades that will complement Northolt town center and contribute to the wider regeneration of the wider area, sorry. And there are now 10 development sites proposed in the Northolt town plan. That's five less than was proposed at Reg 18. And only one of those development sites is deemed to be potentially suitable for a tall building. And it has a maximum height threshold of 10 storeys. And that is the, the site uh, immediately adjacent to and surrounding uh, the Northolt Leisure Centre. And this map illustrates where those development sites are uh, within the town, 10 in all. Killer around gypsy and traveller accommodation, because I know this was a particular uh, source of concern, worry in the local community. And the plan does allocate a site uh, at the Kingdom Workshop on Charvel Lane, right on the boundary uh, with the London Borough of um, Hillingdon. And this follows a separate Regulation 18 or set of initial proposals consultation that we carried out in the summer of uh, last year. Uh, and it looked to identify need for six, six additional gypsy and traveller pitches. And it was informed by um, a consultant study that was done by Three Dragons to look at suitability, availability and deliverability of a number of sites. Two specific sites were consulted upon. Um, the Norfolk driving range, which we have not taken forward for this purpose, although is a separate site allocation. Um, and the Downsbarn Farm, West London shooting ground, the eastern section of that. And following consultation discussion, a small parcel of land on the larger Down Barns West London shooting ground site has now been identified, as I say, the Kingdom Workshop. And just to illustrate that on a map, the site at the moment, as you can see, um, is the subject of a development. It's an unauthorised development uh, for a lorry maintenance yard, although technically currently in green belt, clearly obviously um, not quite fulfilling uh, the uh, sort of uh, image one would expect of Greenbelt. So we have again been very careful to listen to concerns about the impact that um, such a site would have if it was located on a Greenfield site and also to be very careful about its proximity to any existing residential community and we've located it further away um, from, uh, uh, with the exception of the neighbouring farm, further away from any centres of, of population. So I just wanted to say a little bit about chapter five in the plan. This sets out the development management policies that are 18 uh, in total, and these take one of two forms. They're either local variations to existing London plan policies or entirely new policies. And so they include things like design, tall buildings, uh, how we can deliver more affordable housing, how we can generate and protect uh, employment land and more jobs, uh, and particularly affordable workspace, a suite of policies to uh, protect our green and open spaces and promote things like urban greening and biodiversity and sports and recreational facilities, a suite of climate action policies, uh, particularly around operational energy performance. These are quite technical policies, but are aimed um, at um, obviously reducing um, the uh, amount of carbon that's produced and, and so that future development delivers more uh, uh, energy efficient uh, buildings. And then I also mentioned the fact that alongside the local plan consultation, we're consulting separately on something called the community infrastructure levy, the draft charging schedule. Now this will become the primary means to gain financial contributions from certain types of development in the future, which will be used to help fund new or improved strategic infrastructure to support the growth that we identify in the local plan. Now it's very different from the existing section 106 contributions that developers often pay as it's a non-negotiable charge in development. So therefore creates much greater certainty about how much new development uh, will contribute to delivering 
the infrastructure we need to support growth. If you like, think of it as a sort of tax on future development. Now, Section 106 will continue, but it will be used only for site specific mitigation and for non infrastructure requirements. So things like affordable housing and skills funding. And we are indeed the last local planning authority in London um, to attempt to implement uh, a SIL. So long overdue, in my opinion. So the setting of the charge is based on infrastructure requirements. Those are set out in, in a very detailed infrastructure delivery plan and schedule. And you can find that again on uh, the council website. If you go to the landing page and then click on evidence base, you'll find it there. Uh, the schedule, as I say, is subject to uh, separate consultation and independent examination and is supported by uh, evidence around viability. And again, that evidence is also on the evidence based pages of the local plan and the charging rates that we set seek to to achieve a balance between the additional investment needed to support development and the uh, potential effects on the viability of future development as determined by regulations set by government once a charging schedule is adopted uh, it's assumed to be as i say the primary mechanism for raising funds but as i said housing affordable housing payments uh, and certain things like um, carbon offsetting or employment and skills training will continue to be secured via 106 payments. And this sets out the rates, I won't go through this in any great detail, but you expect to see higher rates for residential led development, and that's certainly the case. Uh, and we also set higher rates for particular geographies um, in Ealing, uh, particularly around central Ealing where values are higher. So if you want to have your say on SIL and provide feedback. Um, you will find information again on the council's web page. The closing date for receipt of feedback is exactly the same as the local plan. And if you want to comment on the local plan, we've also created a very helpful toolkit to help you understand and respond to the draft. Again, you'll find that on a link from our local plan landing page and the web pages, and you can provide your feedback in a number of ways. Our preferred route is to complete the representation form via Survey Monkey. Alternatively, feel free to download that form uh, and the original representation form and complete and send that back to us either via email or via snail mail. You can write directly to us by email or send us a letter. And finally, you should be able to find hard copies of the local plan uh, in all the local libraries, including in Northolt and in the Customer Services Centre uh, in Ealing. So finally, in terms of next steps, once the consultation has closed and after we've given very careful consideration to any responses, we will then submit the plan to the Secretary of State for examination. We're aiming to do that in the summer. I'm currently aiming to do that by the end of June. We can suggest modifications to the plan based on any responses received, but we can't make any changes now. Only the inspector can. Um, if any amendments were considered that were identified as being significant, it may require further and additional rounds of public consultation. But once submitted, the inspector will assess the plan for a range of legal compliance uh, tests together with the tests of soundness, which are set out in national planning policy and helpfully again reproduced on our local plan uh, landing page. The examination process, if you like a glorified public inquiry, will be structured around matters and issues that are determined by the inspector, not me. Um, we expect, as I say, to submit in the summer. Again, we don't, we're not in, uh, in charge of the timetable, only the inspector is. Uh, so he or she will determine um, both the issues and matters and the timetable for any public hearings. But I would anticipate that public hearing dates will be likely towards the end of this year, the beginning of next, and then subject to the inspector's report and any modifications or further consultation that might be required. We were looking to adopt the new local plan around the summer of next year. As I say, that will be entirely up to the inspector in terms of the overall timetable and um, approach. So I'm going to pause there now, opportunity to receive any, any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Great, thanks Steve. Um, so we do have a question from Alison in the chat and it's to do with the, the White Hart roundabout um, Newtown Centre. So the question is around um, timescales um, and when are we looking to deliver this? Well, I can't be specific in terms of details at the moment because obviously the work that's being undertaken at the moment is at the very early stages of, of feasibility. 
Um, there have been some very early thoughts around master planning. Obviously, we also need to work with a range of other stakeholders, uh, notably Transport for London, for example, as one of the key landowners, together with others with landowning interests within that area. So it's not it's not going to be happening um, quickly or very soon. I think it's going to be a, something that will likely uh, gather momentum probably within the sort of middle phase of plan between years five uh, and ten, subject obviously to the necessary resources being um, gathered. But we see that new secondary centres, as well as providing a greater range of services uh, to the local community, um, also becoming a new focus for public transport and active travel. And some of those measures could be implemented early on an interim basis, for example, uh, but also acting as a catalyst for transform transformational change on some of the neighbouring sites. And if you look at the, the geography of some of the site allocations, there are a number of sites which abut the roundabout, which I think will be quite heavily influenced um, by development proposals uh, there. So watch your space. I mean, the plan is obviously setting the framework. Hopefully it will provide confidence that this is something which we want to see happen. We now obviously need to get to the next stage, which obviously subject to the plan being approved, is how do we deliver and implement these measures? Mm. So Steve, actually, um, so the second part of the question is which team is leading on this? It was originally the area region team, but um, I, I think that's, has it been handed over to the planning team now? So um, master planning, supplementary planning documents, indeed any other um, uh, development plan documents will always be led by planning, obviously with strong input from our colleagues in Regen and indeed services across the council. These are all, and, and indeed external stakeholders, like I mentioned, TfL would be an obvious one. Um, obviously, these are always very generally and very important collaborative uh, ventures, but clearly, obviously, um, for the changes for the scale of changes that we anticipate to happen, there are obviously going to be uh, major planning um, implications. So I think it's right and proper that uh, planning services will probably lead on that, but it will be a very strong interdisciplinary team involving council services and external stakeholders. OK, great. And it won't um, necessarily take the form of an SPD. Uh, I see there's a supplementary yeah. there. I mean, so for those who don't know what an SPD is, sorry, I slipped into jargon there. A uh, supplementary planning document is something which sits beneath the local plan and provides further guidance, usually on matters to do with um, design. The reason why I'm being a bit hesitant about SPD is government as part of its local plan making reforms is proposing to effectively abolish SPDs in favour of something called supplementary plans, uh, which would require uh, the plan to go through exactly the same processes as a development plan document, such as this uh, local plan, uh, which obviously adds to the um, costs uh, and the delay in terms of um, implementation. My personal view would be a master plan would probably be, uh, a master plan that was agreed by the council would be the best and most efficient way um, of bringing forward these proposals, but I wouldn't rule out the possibility um, of bringing forward more specific area-based policies for Northolt, but we don't have um, any firm proposals on that um, today. Are you are you happy to read the question, Steve? Yeah, um, I'm just, yeah, just, okay, just trying to catch up. So uh, some flashed up. So in terms of alignment with with TfL and general strategies, I think it's first just. To to put things in context, um, TfL obviously partly as a, a consequence of the uh, pandemic um, hangover has obviously experienced quite major difficulties with its future financial funding and planning. Uh, there were stages where its funding formula wasn't guaranteed for no more than a few months at a time. So the idea of them embarking on detailed planning over a 10 or 15 year period um, was quite difficult uh, to contemplate, uh, but we are locked in conversations with TfL colleagues um, on schemes in Norfolk and indeed across the borough. Um, the expectation is obviously TfL may well contribute some financial resources to those, but what we're expecting is that future development will make very handsome contributions towards any new infrastructure requirement, um, including anything which is to do with um, public transport, uh, with roads and indeed delivering some of our active travel measures, which I think will be the game changer for areas such as Northolt. Uh, and again, the same would apply in terms of contributions for other bits of social infrastructure, such as schools um, and for health. 
Uh, and there's a question for those who can't read the chat about the timescales for the development site around the leisure centre as opposed to the Mandeville Parkway. I mean, my understanding simply on that is Mandeville Parkway is in advanced stages of planning, if, if not having already got planning permission. I'm a little bit out of date on that. You may know more than me, uh, the questioner. Uh, so the expectation is that will probably be delivered sooner within the next five years. We are in very active discussion uh, with the land owners um, for neighbouring parcels of land around the leisure centre. Indeed, in fact, had a meeting with them only uh, the week before last. Um, and and uh, one of the key landowners is actually TfL, uh, as you'd expect, perhaps, given its proximity to the station. Um, and so clearly, obviously, they are um, very keen to see that site come forward, as are we, and to optimise the development opportunity there. So I think that will probably follow, but probably will be a few years behind Mandeville Parkway. Um, in terms of how, how we've indicated sort of indicative timescale for development. Yeah, okay. so yeah, um, Mar Mario has just come in to, to say yeah. the leisure, the leisure centre very much at early stages yet. We, 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 we're not, we're not into planning on that. We're still talking about feasibility and, and broad principles. I should just say the other factor actually just, just came to me um, is of course, Part of that site is also subject to safeguarding for high speed two, and that may also influence um, when building um, future development might be able to happen on that site. As you'll be aware, um, we we're quite fortunate at Ealing in so far as, unlike Hillingdon, um, that the high speed two traverses the borough mainly uh, in a tunnel. Um, so there are obviously issues about um, the, the safeguarding and the protection of, of the tunnel infrastructure, which is currently being built. OK, thanks, Steve. I can't see any other questions in the Q&A chat either. Um, does anyone else have any questions or would like to come in and, and voice their question? No? OK, I think we can wrap up then, Steve. Um, so I'll put in the chat the local plan um, email address. Um, please feel free to email us any more questions throughout the consultation period on, on Northwood or any of the other sections of the local plan. Um, we do have other webinars coming up. So we've got um, Ealing, West Ealing and Hanwell on Friday. We've got an afternoon session and an evening session. And then we've got Acton coming up next week and also Greenford and Perryville. Um, just to also say we do have some drop in sessions in Ealing Central Library, so um, there's one coming up this Saturday 16th um, of March from 12 till 2 um, and then also on the 23rd of March same time from 12 till 2. So if you did want to pop by, ask um, any of our planning officers any questions to do with the local plan or how to send in your representations, we'll be there in person. Um, as Steve said, the consultation ends on the 10th of April. Please do send in your representations before this. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Um, and look out for the recording and the slides on the new local plan page. I'll, I'll also put a link in the chat for you. Thank you so much for your continuing interest in the local plan and thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you.